The roar of this aircraft's engine strikes fear into the hearts of its enemies. And the heavy armor and powerful weapons allow you to open enemy armored vehicles like mere tin cans. This, of course, is the iconic A-10 Warthog. The one that goes brrrr, having recently celebrated its 50th anniversary since the first flight. In today's video, we'll be showing you how the Warthog earned its reputation as one of the most efficient attack aircraft and the menacing nickname of Tank Killer. After the Second World War, the development of attack aircraft with conventional weapons stalled slightly, redirecting attention regarding the issue of delivering nuclear weapons using supersonic fighters, McDonnell F-101 Voodoo and Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. When the U.S. Army entered the Vietnam War, their main attack aircraft, the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider from the Korean War, was too vulnerable to ground fire due to its screw design. If there are no suitable options, it's time to create them," said the Air Force research team, advising this branch of service to purchase an inexpensive specialized CAS, or close air support aircraft with capabilities that are not inferior to its predecessor in the face of the A-1 Sky Raider and attack helicopters of that time. In September 1966, this idea was reinforced by the Chief of Staff of the USAF, General John P. McConnell, who ordered the development of the CAS aircraft. And by December of that same year, the Requirements Action Directive for the AX-CAS aircraft was presented to the Office of the Attack Experimental, or AX. In 1970, the U.S. Air Force slightly changed their requirements, issuing a more specific request for proposal, or RFP, for the future device. For example, the service took into account the potential threat from the Soviet armored forces and the possibility of carrying out all-weather offensive operations. Additionally, the requirements included 30mm rotary cannon, top speed of 460 miles per hour or 400 knots, takeoff distance of 4,000 feet, external load of 16,000 feet, flight radius of 285 miles, and the cost of one aircraft at about $1.4 million, equivalent to about $10 million today. The result of the AX program was to be the first USAF aircraft dedicated exclusively to close air support. And to make it even more effective, another RFP was fired in parallel for a 30mm cannon, whose rate of fire was at least 4,000 rounds per minute. Some even jokingly claim that this is one of those aircraft that are built around a cannon. The Air Force received proposals from six companies, choosing among them the two main contenders, the YA-9A attack aircraft from Northrop and the YA-10A from Fairchild Republic. The gun was commissioned to create specialists from General Electric and Philco Ford. The first two YA-10A prototypes rolled out of the Republic plant in Farmingdale, New York. And in May of 1972, pilot Howard Sam Nelson took to the skies for the first time. The final confrontation between YA-9A and YA-10A in January of 1973 was marked by a victory on the part of the latter. Serial production of the A-10 started in February of 1976 and the first attack aircraft was accepted by the Air Force Tactical Air Command the following month. The assembly line worked at an accelerated pace, adhering to a speed of at least 13 aircraft per month and delivering over 715 Warthogs to the U.S. Air Force by 1984, including two prototypes and six prototypes. The A-10 has excellent low speed and altitude maneuverability due to its large wing area, low wing angle, and large ailerons. The wing's design also allows it to make short takeoffs and landings using primitive airfields close to the front line. The aircraft is able to stay in the air, or loiter, at 5,000 feet for about two hours. And with the addition of a 600 US gallon external fuel tank, this figure has increased by another one hour. Honeycomb leading edge panel construction provides strength with minimal weight, 
while similar panels cover the flaps, elevators, and keel sections. This solution demonstrated high efficiency in combat operations, and most importantly, impressive resistance to damage. Sheathing panels integrated with stringers are manufactured using computer processing, which greatly reduces both production time and cost. Ailerons are located at the far ends of the wings to increase the roll moment. They cover almost half the wingspan of the A-10, providing improved control of the craft even at low speeds, and are split, acting as air brakes, making them decelerons. A lower cruising speed of around 340 miles per hour, or 300 knots, made the Warthog more suited to ground attack than the high-speed fighter bombers of the time, which found it noticeably more difficult to fixate small and slow enemy targets. Maintenance, refueling, and rearming of the Warthog require minimal equipment. Its simple design allows maintenance even on bases with limited capacity. Another feature in the attack aircraft is that many of its parts are interchangeable between the left and right sides, including engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. At the same time, due to the strong landing gear, low-pressure tires, and large straight wings, the aircraft can take off from short uneven runways even with a heavy aircraft ordnance load. This allows it to use damaged air bases, taxiways, and even straight stretches of highways. Perhaps an ideal option in case of the apocalypse? Additionally, at forward air bases and other equally risky runways, there's a high probability of damage to the aircraft engines by foreign objects. Here, the A-10 comes to the rescue, with the unusual arrangement of its TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines from General Electric. They reduce ingestion risk, which also allows them to continue working, even at the time of maintenance and re-equipment of the aircraft by ground crews, reducing turnaround time. The wings are also set closer to the ground for easier maintenance and rearmament. Heavy attack aircraft engines require reliable support. Four bolts connect the TF-34 GE-100 pylons to the airframe, and a high 6 to 1 bypass ratio contributes to a relatively small infrared signature. The position of the engines also directs the exhaust over the tail, further protecting it from detection by infrared homing surface-to-air missiles. The engine's exhaust nozzles are angled to cancel out the nose-down pitching moment that would otherwise be generated from being mounted above the aircraft's center of gravity, and avoid the need to trim the control surfaces to prevent pitching. One of the most impressive features of Warthogs is their exceptional survivability. The combat hardening of an attack aircraft can easily withstand direct hits of armor-piercing and high-explosive fragmentation shells of calibers up to 23 mm. The cockpit and parts of the control systems are protected by titanium armor in the form of plates 0.5 to 1.5 inches thick. These weigh 1,200 pounds, which is equivalent to almost 6% of the A-10's total empty weight. Any internal surface in direct contact with the pilot is additionally covered with a multi-layer nylon splinter shield to protect against projectile fragments. And the windshield and cockpit canopy are reliably protected from small arms fire. Engineers also try to protect the fuel system from any impact by enemy fire. All four tanks are located closer to the center of the aircraft and separated from the fuselage. That is, the projectiles must penetrate the skin of the aircraft before reaching the outer skin of the fuel tanks. If all four main tanks are lost, two self-sealing sump tanks will provide fuel for another 230 miles. In case of loss of hydraulics, it has a dual hydraulic flight system and a mechanical system as a backup. In flight without hydraulic power, a manual reverse control system is used. Tilt and roll control is automatically enabled, while roll control is selected by the pilot. In manual mode, the A-10 is controllable enough to return to base smoothly, although the pilot will need to put in a little more effort than usual to do this. The design of the aircraft provided for emergency situations, which allows it to fly even with one engine, half of the tail, one elevator, and half of the wing. Warthog proved its survivability in April of 2003, when Captain Kim Campbell, flying over Baghdad, was seriously damaged by anti-aircraft artillery fire. Even though one of the engines was damaged and the hydraulic system disabled, 
Campbell flew the plane for about an hour and landed safely. Karma is good, but it's even better when it's complemented by a deadly cannon. The main gun of the A-10 is the GAU-8 A Avenger, one of the most powerful aircraft guns, firing armor-piercing projectiles the size of a beer bottle. And his characteristic burr firing sound quickly became the hallmark feature of the Warthog. The initial design of the gun could be changed by the pilot, thanks to which its rate of fire varied from 2100 to 4200 rounds per minute. Although a little later this figure was fixed at a value of 3900 rounds per minute. The gun needed about half a second to reach its maximum speed, so in the first second it fired 50 shots, and after it was about 65 to 70 shots per second. At the same time, its accuracy was enough to fire 80% of the shots within a circle measuring about 40 feet in diameter, while at a height of 4,000 feet. With the help of the GAU-8, the attack aircraft can easily disable the main battle tanks of an opponent. During Operation Desert Storm in 1991, American A-10s alone destroyed more than 900 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 other combat vehicles, and 1,200 artillery pieces. Recalling the joke about building an airplane around a cannon, it's worth recognizing that it really did influence the aircraft's body. The GAU-8 is installed slightly on the port side. The barrel at the firing point is on the starboard side, so that it is aligned with the center line of the aircraft. The ammunition drum is 5 feet 11.5 inches long and can hold up to 1,350 30 millimeter rounds. And to protect the GAU shells from enemy fire, armor plates of various thicknesses were installed between the aircraft's skin and the drum, causing the detonation of incoming shells. The AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missiles are responsible for protecting the aircraft from anti-aircraft systems, which aim at targets due to electro-optical or infrared radiation, and hit them at a much greater distance than the Avenger. During Operation Desert Storm, due to the lack of dedicated forward infrared cameras, or FLIR for night vision, the Maverick infrared camera was used for night missions as a poor man's FLIR. The A-10's arsenal is also complemented by Hydra-70 cluster bombs and rocket pods, GPS and laser-guided bombs like the GBU-39, paveway bombs, JDAM, wind-corrected munitions dispenser, and AGM-154 joint standoff weapon glide bombs. Naturally, this legendary aircraft cannot be left without some modernization as well. The A-10 Precision Engagement Program from 2006 to 2010 upgraded all A-10s and OA-10s to the A-10C standard with a new onboard computer, glass displays, cockpit controls, two new 5.5-inch color displays with moving map function, and built-in digital stores management system. An excellent addition to this is the following, a system for warning the pilot of a missile attack. Whether it is the launch of a friendly or enemy missile within the reach of the A-10C and the Electronic Warfare Unit ALQ-184. For all the years of service, Warthogs were used exclusively by the U.S. Air Force, passing through Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, the Persian Gulf War, the Balkans, and other military operations. In 2022, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, senior U.S. Air Force officials suggested that the A-10s could help Ukrainian soldiers fight Russian armor even more effectively. But soon it was decided to shift the focus to the F-16 fighters, discussions about the supply of which are going on to this day. The future of the A-10 is still uncertain. The U.S. Air Force initially expected it to remain in service until 2028 after which it would be completely replaced by a fleet of the latest Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II fighters. However, experts and critics stated that such a decision would be a giant leap back for the Air Force, given the decent performance of the A-10 and the impressive cost of the F-35. Nowadays, there are talks about decommissioning the Warthog no earlier than the 2030s. Therefore, we will most likely be able to see its formidable silhouette in the sky more than once. What do you think? Should the US take the A-10 out of service today? And if so, why?
share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.